As you can see here, I've stripped down the SRI Turbo's engine bay. You can see here, I've removed the engine loom out of the car completely. I've moved all the battery tray, everything, so I can get to it. Um, I've been having an issue with fuel trim lately. Basically, the uh, car, these are very important for the maps on these to have a perfect fuel trim. A lot of cars out there are probably running with bad fuel trim. They're blaming the map, whatever. It's not. So I've went over the whole car and I've changed every single sensor on it just to make sure it was no sensor issues. So math sensor cam sensor, crank sensor, water temp sensor, uh, obviously injectors, fuel pressure regulator, coil pack, um, map sensor, literally everything, every single sensor that runs this engine has been changed, just so we knew that it wasn't a sensor issue. Um, so you can see what I've done here, is I've removed the engine loom out of the car. Um, basically the lambda sensor is a really important sensor on these cars um, and I always run them brand new if I can. It's one of the most important sensors on the car even though it is just a narrow band. I've got about six of these that I've tried just to make sure it was uh, spot on. There was a brand new one went on here recently um, but I'd, obviously brand new parts can fail so I'll check that anyway and that was fine. Um, obviously the mass is a very critical sensor for the um, airflow and the load of the engine. It, it does a lot a lot of things for this without running a map math sensor or an airflow meter or whatever you want to call it these engines are really really poor so what actually happened the other night was um, actually doing some more diagnostics on it um, with the AFR gauge with the fuel trim with the opcon plugging it in playing around with it uh, I wiggled around a few wires that were near the lambda sensor obviously I said she was the most critical sensor and the coolant temperature sensor which is here and the AFRs changed. The AFRs changed, there was an audible note in the engine. The AFRs on the gauge obviously went from running like mid 13s on idle to uh, perfectly running at like 15s, 14.7s, which is absolutely perfect, that's lambda. And the fuel trim went from like minus 25 to around minus five to plus five, which is absolutely spot on. So that is leading me to think that there's a wiring issue inside this loom. And normally what happens in here is an earth that breaks down. I don't know the history of this loom at all. Obviously it's had a math um, extension on it as well, which hasn't been done by me. Uh, they get extended obviously to run the 80 mil maths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just strip this loom down and check inside for any heat damage, any corrosion. See if the earth mod's already been done. If it hasn't, I'm gonna do that to it. I've got a high probability that it's the wiring inside there and the earth's causing the problem. So once we do that, then we can actually get some more boost into it because um, even though I only put like 22 pounds of boost into it, it started running lean. That shouldn't be right for this sort of setup. Um, and it was just down to a fuel trim issue. Once the fuel trim is causing a problem throughout one set of revs, it will cause it throughout all set of revs. So if it's causing it on idle, if it's say um, lean on idle, it will be lean at uh, 7,000 RPM. If, it was, if it's rich on idle, it'd be rich at 7,000 RPM. Um, as long as it's obviously got the fuel there uh, that the fuel pump and the injectors can flow. So we're gonna strip down this loom now. You're gonna see me do that. And then we're gonna check out and see what's inside, if there's any damage or whatever, and see what the wiring issue is and hopefully find Find something that's a problem if the earth as i said if the earth mod hasn't been done that's going to be done because that is a major problem on the z20 let looms so before we move on to do this earth mod i just want to show you the uh, fuel trim so you can see here it's idling at a lovely lambda 14.7 is perfect so 14.7 to 15 but you can see at the top here short term fuel trim is minus 15 minus 16 it's all over the place now it should be like from plus five to minus five maximum you can see how much fuel it's pulling out at the top here. Now that's a major problem. That is what I'm talking about with fuel trim issue. Even though the idle is perfect and obviously lambda's perfect, the fuel trim is not. So this is the issue we've got at the minute. If you have got Opcom, go and check this out for yourself. Make sure your car is running perfectly. If it's not, follow this guide. Right, so I just got the loom onto the bench and you can see first inspection here, just pulled off this uh, conduit that wraps around the loom. And you can see here that that is not original tape. So when you use factory tape, this, this Tezza tape stuff, um, like a matte finish, this is the only tape I use, it's proper loom tape. This black tape is not for on looms, it just breaks down stickiness, really, really terrible. So if you're gonna use, um, like obviously, uh, if you're gonna tape up engine looms or whatever, don't use this black nasty tape. Use proper loom tape, it's just gonna make life a lot easier in the future, and you can see here that's the original tape as well. So basically, this is where the lambda sensor was, and obviously the coolant temperature sensor as well, which is here, and that's the area 
area that I was moving so hopefully something in here is wrong um, and that will allow me to be able to fix this a lot easier so I've just removed all that tape and everything off of the loom itself. You can see here we've got the wires exposed now. Now there wasn't actually any repairs done inside here, which is quite weird. So someone obviously just taped it up in the past just to make it waterproof, which is all right. But they just used the wrong tape, as you can see. Now what I've just done here, I've separated the actual earths, the earths that cause the issues in these looms. Now these are the main earths to go to the ECU. And it ends up over here as well to the inlet manifold. You can see this one here. And they all run all the way through here. And it's the earth that supplies everything for most of the sensors. Now you can see in here they're obviously a glue joint which is nice they're waterproof whatever but over time you can see they get tugged on they get pulled on you can see they disintegrate and these are the two earths here that cause the issues with the uh, looms and that's what you do when you do an earth mod so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this actual earth out all the way from here cut all these earths out and I'm going to join them all together all properly so the solder's all nice and uh, whatever so I'm going to cut this um, shrink tubing open just to see if there's any splits or anything inside but normally it's just the polarity and the uh, continuity of the wires itself but it's this one here that causes all the issues and it runs to the coolant temperature sensor the lambda sensor the boost um, obviously the coil pack the whole lot they all run off the same one so gonna just go through all the earths in the loom and I'm just gonna do them all properly retake the whole loom up properly so that's nice, nice and waterproof never have to be done again so what I'm gonna do is obviously it's totally unnecessary to have two um, joints in here two soldered joints you can see you've got two wires going into one here then it goes down into one another joint and it goes to here and you can see how stretched that, that part gets there and it just pulls out damages the earth inside that's a very important section so what I'm going to do here I'm just going to cut that one out there and cut this one out here and then what I do is I use a slightly thicker wire you can see here and I'm going to just join it between these two wires and this two wires up here very easy to do and it gets rid of them two nasty soldered joints as well shrink tube it up tape it up but leave some slack when you do it as well so that there's actually some movement in the loom you can just join it together and it's not going to split in the future So there's that section out there now. So basically I'm just gonna make another section up that just uh, obviously the same length as that, maybe a little bit longer as well, so I've got a little bit of play on there. I've already bought some uh, wire for that, a nice bit of earth. As you can see, it's a lot thicker than the standard one, and we're gonna join them in now. Right, so there you go. We've just um, soldered up the two joints. So you can see here, these are the two joints going into that one like it did on the original loom. Soldered in, nice bit of shrink tube in there as well, a bit of glue. And then what I've done is I just normally uh, roll over a loop just so we've got a bit of slack in there because if this uh, coolant sensor is too tight, you won't be able to get it on and then it'll pull out and you have issues. So obviously the earth is the one that limits the, where the coolant sensor is gonna go. So I just loop that over. You can take that in on the loom. That gives a bit of slack to that earth so it won't pull out again. You can see I've done the same here. That two going into one, the same um, shrink tube in, the same bit of solder. That's nice and strong now. So we can take that bit up. Uh, just going to do that loosely so that we've still got a bit of play in there. Then I'm going to check the rest of the earths along the loom. As I said to you, this one for the math sensor has been extended, which is this one here. It's been extended, and obviously I've not. I didn't do that myself. So I'm going to check that, take that apart, just have a look at it, test it. Make sure the earth's good on that one. If it's good, we'll leave it. If it's not, I'll redo it. So I've also got a small little split in the um, earth wire on the lambda sensor itself. Now it hasn't obviously detached or anything like that, but over time, don't know how long that's been, you can see there like little splits. And what happens is uh, water gets in there and oxidizes the copper, causes the connection to go bad, causes interference in the wiring. So I'm gonna just chop that little section out there and solder a new one in. We're just gonna cut that get some fresh copper on there, shrink tube it up, be perfect. So you can see I've just Tesla taped this up nice and loose still. I'm gonna put some conduit over the top of that. So actually when I chop this section out here, I don't know if you can see on close up, the actual copper itself 
yeah, I've brushed most of it off now, but it's green all the way through this wire. Uh, and also I had to cut it all the way down to here just to get the, rid of the green that back to fresh copper like that, uh, where the copper has oxidized over the time where it's had a split in there for a long time. Uh, now I'm lucky, obviously you can see I've pulled out the pin and I actually have loads of spare looms um, like that I've used for different connectors or whatever. So I'm just pulling out uh, the connector out of this one at the minute for the rear lambda loom. And I'm gonna just splice this section in because this section's got no splits in it or whatever. So I'm just gonna splice that section in um, and that'd be good as new then, nice fresh bit of copper. So we're gonna have no earthing problems with that Lambda sensor. So now that pin's in there nice and tight. So you see we've repinned that, that's the old one that come out of it. It was all oxidized and then we've got a new, nice new one in there now. So I'm just gonna loop that over. So I don't have to cut it down a lot. And then we're gonna just join that in. So I'm gonna see how far this green goes back here. So you can't really see it on camera, but this wiring is still green, it's not fresh copper. So we're gonna cut it all the way back till we get to fresh copper and then we're gonna join it in. So there we go, both sections are down to nice fresh copper. You can see how nice shiny that is on both sides as opposed to that dull green look that we had with the oxidization. So we're gonna solder them in. Um, so it just goes to show even a little split as you see in that the water ingresses into the wire and causes a problem so just any little splits like that don't just bang some tape over the top chop it out or strip it back and see if it's got uh, oxidization behind it because it's going to cause a problem so that's another issue sorted you can see that's been soldered again and uh heat shrinked and uh, left it a little bit loose as well so i can just tuck that over into a loop like that so we're going to have no strain on this connector again so we're just going to work our way now keep working our way down the loom see there's a broken plug connector there for the injector uh, it's not going to affect it much but i'm going to replace that because i've got some spare ones i want to get all the way to this loom on the earth as well just to make sure that's in good condition so pulling open the injector casing, you can see here there's an earth inside the injector casing that goes to the boost control solder. And this causes problems as well over time. And then you get boost control problems. You have the front boost control sensor malfunction. So the light comes on the dash. You can change it as many times as you want and it will not fix it. So I always chop these out and obviously join these as well because the solder breaks down inside them. There is really no need for it to be there. Um, it could have just been joint in one wire. I don't know why they put an, like a, a joiner in there. But on that, that subject of joiners, I'm really impressed with the way they've done this math sensor um, extension. So it looks like whoever done it, done it properly, and they'd cut another loom up, and they took this whole section out of the loom because obviously all the wires and everything, they all join up. So they've literally cut another loom all the way back here, and then they've uh, joined it in. And you can see it's all been done properly, so I don't need to address that. It's been done with proper joints. And so that's perfect. So we're gonna leave that and we'll just tape that one back up. I've checked the earths over and everything's perfect. So let's get this one cut out and uh, done. And then we can literally get this back together. I'm gonna to replace these clips as well, like I said on the back here. So something that's bugging me when I took the loom out is that this uh, connector has been cracked at some point. You can see it's actually broken. And no, my luck, that's gonna come off when I'm driving down the motorway. So I've just removed this one from another loom. You can see it's got a nice um, connector on it as well so I'm going to remove this connector deep in it I'm going to swap it over to this one um, so that we've got a nice sturdy connection in there because this is really important this is the power for the actual loom itself but there we go so that loom's all back together the conduits are on I've Tesla taped everything so it's all nice and tidy when it's back into the car I'll make it even tidier with some more Tesla tape and uh, cable ties just to make it all uh, clip into place properly so I'm going to get this on the car now so we can test it so it's such a shame that you have to cover up this uh, like obviously nice inlet manifold and everything with this nasty loom. So your engine bays look really nice without the loom in them. Um, as soon as you put the loom back in them, they look untidy. So that's why I've done the wire tuck on my track car. It was actually a really nice design. I've actually still got that loom still, but it obviously goes into the car behind the ABS unit and everything. So that's not gonna be going into this one. Right, here you go. So all I've done now is I've started the car up, first start up on the uh, new loom. So the loom's been built as you just see, and I've changed absolutely nothing other than doing the earth mod. And you can see the difference is made for the fuel trim. So as I said to you, minus five to plus five is absolutely perfect. So you can see there, the fuel trim is perfect on Lambda. You can see on the AFR gauge exactly how it should be, 14.7s to 15s. Uh, the car isn't even warmed up fully yet, you can see here. So it's just over 80 degrees, so it's not even fully warmed up. And you can see the fuel trim is spot on. So all I've actually done here is just do the earth mod. I haven't changed any sensors or nothing. So you can see how much difference that makes. Um, it was throwing up fault codes, uh, misfires on cylinder two, random misfires. 
um, all sorts of things coming up, all interesting faults. Now you can see here, there's absolutely no DTCs present. I'll just refresh the list again. You can see here, absolutely no problems at all now. Um, so that's absolutely perfect. So I'm really happy with that. Obviously, going to take it for a drive, um, check the boost in, uh, check the uh, AFR gauge, obviously, when it's on boost. So we should be aiming for just over about 22 psi, 23 psi. Um, and with this actuator that's on it, it should actually hold that boost all the way to uh, high RPM. So that'd be fun. Right, there we go. So the loom's back in the engine bay. You can see how untidy it makes it. Like I told you with the inlet manifold side of things, obviously makes it a lot nastier with all these wiring about. That's why I wanted to do a wire tuck on the uh, last car, just so I could say I could do it. Obviously got rid of all the fuse box and everything. So now we're going to do some testing. So obviously I've come to uh, get some fuel, get some Shell V power in the car. Obviously Shell V power is the best fuel in the country. Um, a lot of people use Tesco's momentum and so do I at some points, but the uh, best fuel without a doubt is Shell V power. It's been tested, tested time again. We've tested it on the dynos. Obviously it's not a massive difference, but between momentum and V power, but V power is always the best. So, you know, we're going to fill up with some Shell V power goodness now. And then we're gonna take this out for a drive and do some testing with it and uh, show you the fuel trims. Uh, and I've got a feeling that we have all the boost back again because this map is set for like 22, 23 PSI. At the minute, it was running 18, 19 PSI maximum and it was pulling ignition out, misfire and all sorts of things. So let's get to uh, checking that out now. We'll uh, show you some driving footage. So most people think that these co stick setups are really, really laggy, and I know I've talked about it before, but they are really not. Watch out the revs and watch how fast this, this turbo was small. So, you know, it's over 20 PSI, and so we ain't doing many revs, you can see here. So I'm just gonna drop it down and watch how fast it spools up. So you can't tell me that's laggy. It spools as fast, if not faster than a co 4 setup. Right, so now that earthing issue is sorted out, I just wanted to change over this fuel filter because it hasn't been done since I had the car. Obviously, the car was off the road for four or five years sitting there. Fuel filter hasn't been changed. The reason I didn't want to change it before I'd done the earth mod or whatever I showed you the fuel trim is because I didn't want people saying, oh, it's because of the fuel filter that the fuel trim has changed, which it hasn't. Um, obviously, I haven't changed it yet. Just wanted to say as well, um, another reason why this car spools so fast is because this turbo actuator is obviously a turbo smart one. It's got a lot of preload on it to keep that wastegate shut. It's also got a 17 PSI spring in it. So that's the spring I use for the maps that I uh, build because it keeps that wastegate shut at high RPM. I also replaced this seal in here so this never moves. So you can see here, um, they normally move, spin round, and it leaks air out of here. These are leaking no air. That helps a lot with the boosting as well. And you can see I put a ton of preload on it. Now, this arm is different, so it's not the stock arm. I've actually changed the arm for a stainless arm, so don't uh, look at this preload and think yours got to be the same preload. Uh, it's all been measured and set out correctly. Right, so out with the old, this is actually a GM item, which is quite nice. I wanted to get the part number off it to get a, a new one because I like the GM filters. They just, you know, they look better and I want to get one for the red car with the stick on it just so it looks original. You can see here, I'm going to take these clips and use these clips that are on it. Um, you can use the reuse the clips that are in the fuel lines, but I like to use the clips that come with a filter. So we've got a fresh fuel filter on there now. That little um, screw there, that one that you undo to get the filter off is a T20 uh, Torx. So you see I've got these little snap-on ones, they're easy enough to use. And that just literally unscrews. You unscrew that and the uh, bracket comes off. You pop it off with these little clips here, almost like a push-on fitting. And they just pop in, you couldn't be any simpler than that. 